SSDs and the backplane saturates. Okay, so three parts are meant to have the bandwidth to feed all these SSDs. And then this idea here is that if you look at an architecture where you can have 300,000 IOPS potential, I could maybe carve that up and tune the array to get the right IOPS for each application and actually guarantee an SLA of IO or bandwidth. So it's a new feature we've got called priority optimization. Some people call it QOS. I think QOS is a bit dumb though because you know, QOS is normally dealing with a solution or problem for old architectures. This is more about saying, oh, I've got some high tier applications, I want them to have X millisecond to host. And if something else starts hitting a three part, don't let that interfere with it. This is absolute guaranteed protected space. So we let you do that. And again, it's all set by policy. You don't have to reserve space. You don't care which disk it goes on. It just manages it yourself. So you know you can carve up the array. Just another feature of multi-tenancy that we're coming out with. So I thought I'd talk to you about you know one of Simon's clients, uh, Medibank, uh, Charlie Gonzalez, who uh, was the, the leading light in Medibank, who about two years ago, when three parts sort of first came into the HP family, Medibank had a bit of a problem. They wanted to build a next-gen data center. And all of the efficiency, ease of use side of things mattered a lot to them because they couldn't get skills, they had a limited amount of space, they wanted maximum density, no wastage. So what they found, in addition to all the things that we spoke about, um, you know, the uptime and so on, they also were finding from EVA to 3PAR, they were saving a huge amount, sometimes 80% less for some storage workloads when they did that factor thin migration. They also found that when they were doing things like storage v motions from uh, one host to another host, the way that 3PAR was able to do that and accelerate um, things like the sand fabric and optimize the, the, you know, the quality of service, um, they had a huge throughput. It was 500% faster over EVA. So that's the kind of scale of what they're onto. And you know, a 7000 series is about another 2x on the, the model that they bought. So it kind of gives you a, a scale of the, the headroom. So I mean, anything else that you want to add? What, what Charlie, what, how are they going lately? I haven't spoken to a bit, but... Oh, they're, they're going well. They're, um, yeah. they're, they're growing fast, yeah. but they're not necessarily purchasing quickly because not it's, it's a problem for them, but it's great for them. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, you know, the way that they're doing it efficiently means, again, their, their, their storage growth, and uh, uh, that, that's very much a thing for us. I thought I'd show you just um, Savas. Anyone heard of Savas? So Savas are a, what someone might call a public cloud provider, and uh, Savas run a huge public cloud and also a dedicated private cloud for many of the large customers in Australia. Um, they have a single data center with a lot of three parts. And again, for them, I just thought I'd spin it on its head to show you if you're interested in service providers and what they use three part for, you know, the, the, the peer motion way for them was able to give them investment protection. They could have old 3 par with new 3 par and sort of as the, the technology moved ahead, they were able to have them coexist and move data non-disruptively between the old and new models that they had, which for them, non-disruptive service was, uh, uh, was, was critical. Um, there's a whole bunch of data points there that I've got. I don't want to go too much into federation, other than to say for some of you who are interested in um, in point five here, you know, if you have EVA, anyone here want to? I'll give you a book of a special EVA prize, shall we, Andrew, for anyone with an EVA? Wonderful, good, special prize. Fantastic, we've got a special prize right here. We love our EVAs. Free trailer. I'll give you a super deal on a migration. <laughs> This, 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 this here, we, you know, we've got thousands of EVAs still in use, and um, uh, you know, EVA for us is uh, you know, a classic thing of a, uh, it has some of the, the, the actual features of 3PAR, like the way that it stripes across multiple spindles and virtualizes, you know, the V in EVA is you know, virtualizing the disks. But EVA from a throughput perspective, you know, it uses, a, it uses a, what, what I would call a legacy controller. Uh, we've introduced some new features in there, but when you start to look at customers that say, I love what EVA does because it's so simple to manage and use, but I need more performance, give me more headroom. So what you're able to do is we've got a smart start, we can import from EVA to 3 part straight from command view. So it gives you that kind of investment protection, and that's using peer motion under the covers to be able to do that. So the online import, you're able to take an EVA, a couple of steps and wizards. Uh, we, we do, of course, recommend HP services in uh, handling dangerous goods. So, um, uh, but, you know, to, to be honest, when 3 Power was a company, we didn't have a lot of whole expensive migration services. So we bundled up and we've got some really sharp people who can, not from the perspective of knowing how to migrate data, that's easy. It's more the risk mitigation to know what hosts, what applications, and apply some of the smarts. Because what we don't want you to do when you move to 3 Power is apply old thinking to new 3 Power. There's a whole bunch of optimization things you can do there about how to actually 
deploy the system a lot smarter and more efficiently when you go to three part. So that's more what we help you with, with the migration services that we do. But the actual way that you do migration to three part is very, very simple and we've got a bunch of ways to do that. Does it hit the, the, will the EVA suffer any degradation while it's doing it? It, it has a sigh of relief. It's just, oh, so, it's it's you said online, so are you yes. going to feel any issues with them? Um, no, it, it'll do. So you can have a host still writing data and actually writes the writes the both as the lines migrating. I wouldn't recommend you do that because if you're reading and writing at the same time on a particular LUN, yes, you're going to have performance impact. So it all depends on what the host is doing. You know, I wouldn't be running a, a big backup job while you're planning to run a migration, uh, for example. So we just manage that and point out what that risk is. But the actual process is non-destructive and online. Yeah. See, I could just add that when, Please. when we kick that off in that online migration process, we switch the load to the three part pretty much straight away. So, mm. so there's a the point where you marry up from Kamabi, you say there's my array, go crack me a part of one, uh, online migration, partial online, um, and then literally you're booted from sand, you're, you're now on the three part, the data's all over on the EDA, we're reading right into the three part, we're copying the data over in the background. Once it's all copied, we park the run on the EDA and mark it back and present it in the locker. So it's a historical review comments. But we do ship the load over to the three part pretty quick. What about for VMs and data stores and stuff like that? Well, it's the same as the same thing. Yeah. So the VMs don't keep ship the crew all that. VMs won't know. Point to the view. There you go. Wow. And uh, again, when you go to that, that sort of migration, just the, again, headroom and uh, the, the way that that new strike will you know, elasticize over multiple spindles is um, gives it a performance benefit. Normally, it's a, it's a reduction in response time to host, so it sees things working a bit faster. Same thing. So I just wanted to touch on quickly for virtualization. Uh, we've mentioned all of these things already. It's the same thing at the server level for the efficiency of the way that VMs work. Because the throughput of 3PAR does what it does, the scalability of 3PAR can scale much more than most uh, you know, modular arrays, you actually get um, a great deal more performance and the density of your VMs, as in you know, the number of VMs per blade or per server, you can increase that dramatically. Typically, we see a factor of two with 3PAR. Now, we kind of, you know, HP legal is always a bit, bit testy and a little bit conservative, but we either guarantee half the storage or double the VM density, but the actual proof is that you can get both. The half the storage doesn't come at the expense of performance of the host. So um, what we typically see is, you know, you can cram more VMs in to every server, which, you know, cutting our arms off means you don't have to buy as many servers. But it also helps in the overall operational efficiency of how tightly you can squeeze and converge these systems together. And so the other benefit that we have. And you know, we love to test this, and we, we also like when customers move from old to new, and then we go back and we benchmark, and we've done a few of these now, uh, and we haven't been proven wrong. Um, sometimes we've had a customer that says, wow, three part of that stuff you told me didn't really live up to it, and then we ask, well, what tier of storage did you do? And of course, they're putting all their performance lungs on Nearline, for example, thinking there's some magic cure by having the slowest tier of disk magically perform dramatically faster. Now, it is true, you can fit an all Nearline three part. You can have 1,920 two terabyte nearline drives in a 10,800 and run your stripe across everything and you do get massive bandwidth but I probably wouldn't recommend that because you need about six floor cabinets and a bit, bit unnecessary if you want an IOS. So we try and right size it for the array. But um, VM density again, just another benefit in terms of the overall efficiency of the array and we can, uh, we can measure that for you. We can capture what your current rate of efficiency is and part of that is what um, Andrew and the team here are hoping to run with you is a way that we can um, help you uh, identify current waste that's in your environment, where the savings can be derived from, and uh, show your path forward. So with that, hopefully that was informative, um, and uh, share a few tricks on it. But again, you know, SSD is the future. We haven't got an old SSD one at the moment, do we? Come on. I have to get some in, I think. Sure. Yeah, because when you put SSDs, they've done a few PSCs overseas, and they, they, they go off. But, so with that, hey, thanks very much. and. Um,